This is a demonstration video looking into tantalum and some of the applications that use tantalum. Tantalum is a transition metal found in the lower part of the periodic table and is often referred to as refractory metal due to its exceptional melting point in the excess of 3000 degrees Celsius. One of the big uses of tantalum is within the electronics industry where tantalum is used in electrolytic capacitors. The shape and electrical ratings will vary depending on the electrical requirements. If a tantalum capacitor is correctly used they have a very long life as there is no electrolyte to dry out. Tantalum capacitors are however very sensitive to over voltages particularly in the reverse direction. To show this voltage sensitivity we've taken a surface mount tantalum capacitor hooked it up to a power supply in the incorrect direction and applied a voltage and as we can see as we increase the voltage a fairly spectacular reaction within the tantalum capacitor. And just to see that one more time And now if we look at the design of a surface mount tantalum capacitor we can see a potential site of failure. This is where the cathode is soldered onto the manganese dioxide side of the capacitor. That junction has literally blown apart. In the next demonstration we are going to show the use of tantalum metal as a basic light bulb filament. To heat this filament we're going to use electricity to pass a current through the tantalum metal and our filament is going to be in the shape of a dog bone so we're going to count this from our tantalum sheet. A shape of a dog bone places the fin section in the middle so this is going to have the area of high electrical resistance so this should heat up by the passage of current according to I squared R and produce the ohmic heating. When we hook our tantalum metal up to a power supply and increase the current you can see for a brief period there is a glow before the strip breaks. This is due to a high temperature reaction with oxygen and nitrogen in air. At low temperatures tantalum is an incredibly stable metal and resilient to a lot of acids but at elevated temperatures it will oxidize. And if we look at some of the residue on the multimeter, this is a white powder and this is tantalum pentoxide. In order to make our tantalum filament more stable, we've modified the setup, this time using a glass bottle to contain an inert atmosphere. Copper electrodes, which have been cut for some copper wire, are going to be fed into the bottle through the old cork along with a small metal tube so the atmosphere can be evacuated and replaced with inert argon gas to hopefully protect our tantalum from oxidizing. To seal the electrodes in a small tube we're going to use silicon sealant. So after applying our silicon sealant we're now going to attach our tantalum strip to the ends of our electrodes. To form the electrical connection we're going to use some brass terminals These have been cut out from a chocker block connector. So screwing these onto the ends of our electrodes and then screwing them down onto our tantalum sheet. Tantalum metal is also used as an alloying addition to high temperature super alloys due to its high melting point and the ability of tantalum to form tantalum carbides. This can strongly influence high temperature mechanical properties, notably creep within these high temperature superalloys. With our tantalum strip secured to our electrodes, we now insert this into our bottle. and apply more silicon sealant to the cork. The role of the silicon sealant is to provide a seal on the top of the bottle. To place an inert gas inside the bottle the air was evacuated 
through the small metal tube which was inserted through the cork using a vacuum pump. Once evacuated, the bottle was then backfilled using welding gas. This welding gas consisted of inert argon. Once backfilled with argon, the tube was then crimped in order to seal the argon inside the bottle. Unfortunately, this step is not currently shown within this video. So this bottle is now ready for testing. There was, however, an interesting element of incompatibility between the silicon sealant and copper, where we can see a little bit of corrosion and close up at the top of the bottle. This may be because of acetic acid may have been released by the silicon sealant and attacked the copper. So with the bottle now containing a partial pressure of argon gas, we now hook this up to our power supply and hopefully the filament's going to burn a little bit longer. Now we start ramping the power supply up in current and very soon we can see a glow of our tantalum strip and with a little more current the glow increases but this time it appears that the tantalum strip isn't breaking so what we can see we have created a light bulb although probably not the most efficient in the world but it is a tantalum light bulb. It would be possible to make a light bulb using the same setup using nichrome wire or tungsten wire. But in the demonstration shown you successfully made a light bulb using tantalum. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.